Celine Thomas is a leader of the Tunbridge Wells branch of the Women's Equality Party. And Elizabeth Hobson is from Justice for Men and Boys. Um, let's speak with uh, Celine first of all. Um, so, morning to you, by the way. Why are we asking, well, why do we need uh, International Women's Day? Well, we, as we mentioned, there's a plethora of women in high-profile places, from Karen Brady to the Met Commissioner. Good morning. Well, um, I just wanted to remind everybody that International Women's Day is, of course, a global event. So we are looking a little bit beyond our own shores and trying to understand the picture for women across the world. It's actually a, now a UN day, a UN initiative. So um, it's linked to, to that movement as well. If you want to talk about women all over the world, women are still facing forced marriage. Um, they have not equal participation in levels of civil and political life, child marriage, violence against women, you know, right to education. These are things that women are still fighting for all over the globe. So that's why it's thought that International Women's Day is still very much needed, both as a celebration of women and what they've achieved but also as a reminder and a continual push for improvement. Mm. So uh, we could have improvement in all sorts of areas, couldn't we? You know, in, in cl class, I think, is often one of the things that holds a lot of people back, whether they're male or female. I absolutely agree with that. And, of course, it's not as simple as just saying, um, I'm a woman, I'm discriminated against. You can be uh, multiply affected by all sorts of forms of discrimination, as a woman, uh, equally as a man. And I understand that. That's two sides of the same coin, I think, where we see discrimination against women. Often it's also affecting uh, men in our communities. And so I would always say looking for equality is actually looking for justice for everyone in society. Mm. OK. Elizabeth Hobson uh, from Justice for Men and Boys. Could you, Elizabeth, just put some meat on the bones as to what your organisation is. Uh, we are a political party and we campaign for the rights and well-being um, of men and boys. Okay. Our primary campaigning issue is against male genital mutilation, which is still condoned by the state. And if you look globally, there are seven boys circumcised for every single girl. Interesting. So that's some of the campaign work you do. Where do you sit on this issue then of International Women's Day? Where does that fit within the, mm -hmm. the, the narrative of your party? Well, we celebrate International Women's Day just like we celebrate International Men's Day. It's a wonderful occasion to um, celebrate the wonderful women that have been and are and will be. And, you know, and also to raise issues that particularly affect women. OK. And mm -hmm. in terms of the need for an International Men's mm -hmm. Day compared to an International Women's Day, you're not seeing that as a 50-50 thing, are you? Or are you? Do I see it as a 50-50 thing? Yeah. Um, I see it as a 50-50 thing, yeah, for equality's sake. Okay. Um, I definitely think we should have both. I, you know... No, but I, I'm sorry, if, if, if you misunderstood, I, I make the point that there, we, we can sort of articulate the reasons why there are, uh, and we can provide solid evidence as to why women are left behind in lots of ah. different ways. So oh. in, in the respect of needing an International Men's Day in comparison mm -hmm. to a Women's mm -hmm. Day, they're not quite the same thing, surely? Well, yeah, I completely agree, but for the exact opposite reason. So, I mean, you know, like I've said, it's baby boys who are discriminated against by not having um, the protection from child um, mutilation, genital mutilation. Um, it's men who are discriminated against in family courts, losing meaningful access to their children for no other reason than the fact that they're men. They're discriminated against in the criminal justice system where they receive harsher sentences because they're men. Um, they are not able to access the kind of quotas and okay. special support that women get in education and workplace. Okay, can I come in? Because I want to ask Selena a question, please. Um, Selena, you made a very valid point at the start saying International Women's Day is a course about women globally. And I spoke earlier about, you know, some of the disadvantages in developing countries that women are currently facing, which I think we should all be ashamed about on this planet. But um, something's being levelled at me quite a lot on the show is how we sort of made it in this country. People look around, they see more women in the top jobs. But I would argue that actually we aren't there yet because it's harder to get promotion, perhaps, if you're a woman. It's also that the micro level jibes and taunts that women receive on, on a daily basis. Would you concur that actually there's still more work to do in this country? 
Oh, yes, absolutely. There is more work to do. Um, we, of course, we see some women in top jobs in high profile positions, but everybody knows that's not the norm. Uh, it's much more difficult for women to get into senior roles. And it's very much borne out by the, the gender pay gap still. So there's still a 17 percent gender pay gap. Women earn less, you know, overall per hour per job. It doesn't really matter how you look mm. at it. Um, so that's still a problem, and, and I think people are really waking up to that and wanting change. You see a lot of organisations doing positive things on International Women's Day. I think, um, for me, the only uh, really important message is let's not stop at International Women's Day. This has to be a 365-day-a-year mm. movement for change, and I think that that is starting to happen in that um, International Women's Day. Actually, people weren't really talking about it five years or so ago, and now True. I think with things like Me Too and growing awareness of harassment for, uh, in the workplace and problems in Parliament, it's all become uh, one movement of which International Women's Day is one part. It's perhaps the highest profile moment of the year. Indeed. Um, so it's about continual pr improvement. And Celine, I was reading that actually because of the, the way the gender pay gap is at the moment, women work essentially two years for nothing um, compared to men at the moment. And I know that this year's theme of International Women's Day is exactly that. It's, it's the gender pay gap. So what, what needs to change within workplaces, within employment, to make sure that that can be levelled out? I mean, is it, a, is it as simple as saying, well, you have better childcare, that there needs to be more flexibility? Look, there's nothing simple about saying we need better childcare. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big issue. It's a complex issue. It's one of the most important issues for the Women's Equality Party. I mean, we've been campaigning for a long time for universal free, free childcare because it holds so many families back, not just women, but families who want to have two parents in work. Yes, it does affect women more often than men basically because the assumption is the woman will stay home for longer after she's had a child. Men, as you said earlier, I was listening in, um, it, they find it very difficult to come back sure. into the workplace. So that, that has to be a priority. But workplaces can do many, many other things to in, you know, encourage all of their employees to think um, and work more flexibly to, to allow for caring responsibilities. And, you know, and ju and ju just a final point to Elizabeth Hobson. Although, uh, Elizabeth, you represent justice for men and boys. What, however or how, will you be celebrating International Women's Day? Have you bought a cake? <laughs> no, uh, we'll be publishing a series of blog posts on people, women that we admire. Um, I'll be tweeting. Uh, there was We did a little demonstration outside of the March for Women, the indoor March for Women that happened last Sunday, uh, just to make it known that we were women, we were non-feminist, and we weren't going away. Elizabeth, thank you very much for your time. Elizabeth Hobson is from Justice for Men. And Celine Thomas is leader of the Tunbridge Wells branch of the Women's Equality Party with us here on BBC Radio Kent.